Hey, welcome to my pantry tour. My food philosophy is to keep meals simple. Prioritize protein and eat the best quality ingredients that I can. I often show my finished meals on Instagram stories and on TikTok. So if you wanna give me a follow, head over to at Marcus Philly on those platforms. But today, I'm taking the mystery out of meal prep by showing you how I keep my fridge and pantry stocked to always have a meal handy that fuels my training and helps me maintain muscle mass. Plus, I'm gonna hit you with some tips on what to look for to feed your kids high quality snacks. Every family is different and this is just one way to do it, but I hope it gives you some ideas for how to put the food philosophy to work for yourself and for your family. And to make it even easier, head on down to the description below and click the free link for a fridge like Philly guide. It's gonna include snack ideas for kids and this way, you're not gonna have to take any notes on this video. All right, let's dive in. Yo, what's up? Welcome to my house. This is my kitchen, and I'm gonna take you on a pantry, fridge, and countertop tour so you can see how I stock my house for my family, for myself, so that we can eat good food every single day, never miss a healthy meal. Here we go. Well, one of the things I love about this house that we got is this brand new refrigerator with the double doors that open up wide. Helps us to see everything that we've got in here. Let me start with the over here on this door. All right, this is where I keep most of my dairy. I've got all of my kefir that I have made up here. I have some of that every morning, got milk, and then orange juice for the kids. I'll have some of that periodically, but not too often. Uh, top row, I've got a lot of homemade beef broth. So that's something that is easy to make. I've talked about a lot on other videos and on Instagram posts, but about a cup of that in the morning warmed up. It's a great way to start the digestive process off of the day. It tastes delicious. My wife puts heavy cream in her coffee, so we get some organic heavy whipping cream, which is, if you're gonna put cream or any type of milk into your coffee, uh, heavy whipping cream is the way to go. It's delicious, and she doesn't digest lactose really well, but she can handle that super well, so she loves it. Okay, also, we've got gluten-free Canyon Bakehouse bread for the kids. Uh, Noah loves this particular brand, and what I love about this particular brand is that it doesn't have any uh, really refined seed oils in it. Most of the breads that are out there, gluten-free breads that are out there, are made with canola oil or grapeseed oil. This one's supposed to have, this one says it has extra virgin olive oil in it. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and trust that, but this is the bread that she uses. We make those sandwiches for her for school. We've also got a couple different salsas and red sauces, tomato sauces. So tomato sauce, we mix in with ground beef for our daughter, Joey. She loves that. My wife also loves that. And this is my fermented salsa that I make. I put that on eggs. I put that on meat. I put that in rice with some ground beef. It's a great uh, little condiment. Joey loves her some chocolate milk. So I try and get the best quality. And when I look at the ingredients of this, I was like, this is a perfect post-workout uh, drink. It's about 60 grams of carbs. Uh, 20 grams of protein, some quality fats, grass-fed milk, not bad. So she loves that. Got a leftover avocado. And then this is something I have most days. I have some Greek yogurt, um, grass-fed, and it's whole milk. Uh, up here, what you're seeing is my, this is my uh, sourdough starter. So when I make sourdough, it, I use this um, as my, base to start the recipe, but I've taken a little bit of a break, so I put these in the fridge so that the fermentation can slow down and I can save these for a later date. If I wanna start baking bread again, I put this on the countertop and it just comes back to life. And then this is discarded uh, dough that I'm gonna to use to make crackers at some point. All right, coming down to the next shelf. Over here, we've got pickled onions. We've got pickles. We've got more pickles. We've got fermented ketchup. Um, so those are pretty much like condiments, things that are gonna go on the side of many of my dishes uh, because um, they add a lot of flavor and they kind of balance out getting a little bit of vegetables on top of meats, things that I'm eating. Um, over here, you'll see that we've got a little bit of organic strawberry spread. This one, again, is just fruit that has been macerated down and made into a jam. It doesn't have any weird stuff in it, a little bit of sugar, 
but nothing else. And then we use this for our kids' sandwiches. Um, there's always a little bit of fruit. We like to store our apples in the fridge and our berries in the fridge. It keeps them really fresh and crisp. So you'll find apples in the fridge always. And then you typically find a couple different meats that are either marinating or they've been cooked. We've always got some ground beef or some type of ground meat that's ready for the kids or for my wife. Um, sometimes I'll dip into it as well, but I'm usually cooking my meat each day. She's got some marinating <coughs> fish in here, salmon and Pacific cod. So she's gonna put that into the air fryer later, but it's marinating in something like tamari, maybe a little bit of oil, maybe just a touch of, of honey. Um, I think that's her marinade. I've got some thawed out meat that's in here. This is all ground beef. And then we drop down here. These were the berries I was talking about. Kids love berries. We've always got several different types of cheeses. There's always some pecorino or grated uh, parmigiano reggiano. And then there's more cheese down here. Always got plenty of eggs. Pasture raised, organic eggs. These come from Costco. It's a great buy, high quality. And then we drop into the drawers. This is where we're keeping all of our bacon, all of our grass-fed hot dogs. Um, my kids like these hot dogs. We've got a couple different types. If we have salami at any point, we'll put it in there. My daughter eats a lot of salami, she likes that. So this is where we keep all those things. Over here is kind of our vegetables. We've got some peppers, we've got some carrots. Um, We'll mix those into salsa or maybe just eat the carrots raw. Um, oftentimes you'll find cucumbers in there, zucchini in there. Uh, we just picked some zucchini from the garden and uh, that's gonna go in here uh, or we'll just cook it up tonight. And then we drop down into the cheese section and most of these cheeses aside from the string cheese and these baby bells, this is all raw, um, raw milk or grass fed um, dairy and those tend to agree the most with us when we're uh, for digestion um, and it also tastes delicious. Now we're gonna drop down to the freezer and what do we have in here today? What we have is a variety of different meats that are frozen. I'll pull some out to thaw. We've got some shrimp. We've got beef bones that I scoop marrow out of or that I have for cooking soups or for broth. Um, there's also a few different types of this halibut. Um, so fish down here. My daughter loves to make fresh fruit ice cream. So that's just a bunch of fruit and bananas mixed together. And we freeze it up and we give it to her as ice cream, which she loves. And then I've also got these little jars that have uh, different um, beef organs in them. So this is some heart. I've got some pancreas, I've got some liver in here. So I like to mix in a little bit of that periodically, maybe one of those a day or one of those every other day, just so I'm getting some um, you know, nose to tail nutrition. I'm not just eating muscle meat, I'm getting some organs as well. And then on this top drawer, this is where we've got a little bit of ice cream, you know, the traditional type of ice cream for the kids. We've got some frozen vegetables. We've got frozen berries. We even have a uh, a cake that we made that my daughter wanted to keep for her birthday, which is in six months, so it's freezing in here. <laughs> and then these, this is a gluten-free cookie dough that my wife made that is frozen, hard as a rock, but ready to thaw out any time to make cookies if we wanna do that. All right, that's the fridge and the freezer. Let's head over to the countertop. You can see what we have, fresh produce over here. This part of the tour is pretty quick, but it's basically our fruit counter. We keep all of our fruit out here, or just about all the fruit that we don't want to stay cold and crisp in the fridge. And I'm always trying to get a variety of different fresh and seasonal stuff. Now, we've got some pineapples, we got some mangoes, we've got some watermelon, always lots of avocados that we eat. I've got a grapefruit up here. All of these oranges were picked from our tree outside. They've come into uh, season. They are really delicious and we have so many of them. So gonna be able to cut back on how much fruit we buy. We're gonna pick them off the tree and then always have a lot of bananas on hand as well. That's it for the countertop. Oh, except for one thing. We always got some, some butter out here that will, uh, it's, we keep it room temperature. Um, this is raw butter that was purchased from a local farm. They made this raw butter just up the highway. I buy a box of it. It was like 
a 40 pound box. This is a one pound cube and that's gonna last us the whole year. It's in the freezer downstairs. So this one's thawing out right now and that'll go on to toast. It'll be used to cook uh, eggs in the morning, um, maybe as a, a sauce to uh, cook a steak or something like that. But we use that often. All right, last stop is the pantry. Let me get this thing open so you can see what we got going on. Okay, in the pantry, we've got mostly some things that we're gonna use as snacks for our kids, or I'm storing the bulk ingredients or the ingredients that are gonna stay up here in the case of an emergency or when I'm gonna make the next batch of a condiment or something like that. So. My family loves popcorn. We always have lots of popcorn on hand up here. We get the, uh, we get this kind. Amish country popcorn. It is baby white, extra small and tender. Then I've got a lot of different canned tuna and sardines up here. This is from uh, a friend, a former client, and some a local guy who makes this. Uh, it is line caught tuna. It is sustainably sustainable fishery, um, and this tastes extremely good. So I have one of those or two of those a week. Then uh, let's see, just condiments and extra vegetables and you know canned things like mustard and olives things that we don't use that often, but nice to have a bunch on hand. I've got all of my vinegar for when I'm making pickles or pickled onions. Um, again, we have sardines up here, canned fish, uh, a little bit of lemon juice. We've got marinara sauce. And then down here, kind of the snacks. My kids eat these uh, gluten-free pretzels, which have pretty decent ingredients in them. Not the best. There's some rice cakes in here. I've always got some pork rinds on hand, which I like to eat. My daughter likes them too. She calls them crunchies, uh, of course. And then a couple, we've had a couple of parties recently, so we got a couple different types of chips that we use for entertaining with salsa and guacamole. Um, and then we can drop down to the next layer here. Uh, some more snack stuff, applesauce, pouches. This is where I keep all of the, um, bags of gluten-free baking flour, one-to-one -one baking flour. This I use to make their pancakes in the morning. I also use this for any sourdough bread that I ever make. This is the stuff that I'm using as the base of my sourdough starter. So I've got a box of that in there. We've got a ton of electrolytes element. There's like seven boxes of these in here. I drink one or two of these a day. So these are great to have on hand. They're great to give to friends when they come over to work out outside in the yard. Uh, what else we have? I mean, what household is not complete without some Cheerios? Uh, my daughters love Cheerios and yeah, do I wish they were eating something else? For sure. Um, sometimes uh, they just want to have cereal and so this is uh, about the least offensive one that we could get. We always have some on hand at the house. They also love seaweed snacks and um, this one we're trying a new brand. I haven't actually tried this one before. There's one that they sell at Whole Foods, which is just seaweed and avocado oil. That's the one that I, pre I prefer to get, but this one came from Costco. Um, looks like it's organic. Looks like it has minimal ingredients in it. But the thing that I'm always on the lookout for is what kind of oil do they actually roast that seaweed in? And avocado oil is the best kind that I've found trying to stay away from the canola oil or safflower oil. More pickles, gluten-free pasta. If you haven't picked up on the theme here, we're gluten-free in this household. We let our kids have gluten. Uh, I have a suspicion that one of them is pretty allergic to it. She t tends to get um, nauseous after she has something with gluten in it, but we generally just try and uh, keep them to a gluten-free lifestyle because that's what we do around this house for ourselves as parents. Uh, but we're not like opposed to it and we've been giving them gluten since they were kids just so that they were exposed to it and they wouldn't feel like they couldn't have it at some point later in life because they develop an allergy from us depriving them of it. So they get to explore whatever they want with their palate. Um, and then the last things are just tomatoes, tomato paste, chicken broth, and then this is a giant thing of rice that I got, you know, the 50 pound bag from Costco. It's almost empty actually at this point, so I'm gonna have to re-up on that, but that's about two years worth of rice that we've made it through. And that 
pretty much concludes the pantry. Uh, nothing else to see here, and really nothing else to see in my fridge, nothing else to see on the countertop. There's nothing else to see at all because everything that we eat for the most part is fresh. So there's not food that's just hiding up in cupboard somewhere that we aren't showing you. This is what we eat on a daily basis. This is how we fuel our family, and this is how we keep it as simple as possible so that we can be as consistent as possible with our nourishment and our food. I hope you got something out of this. If you have questions and you wanna know more, drop them in the comments below. I'd be happy to engage with you down there and share more about what I'm doing to stock our house with food. I hope you liked that video. I hope you got something out of watching my pantry and fridge tour. Look, your fridge and pantry don't have to look like mine for you to have success looking good and moving well. Take some of these key ideas and make them work with your own tastes, budget, and what you like to eat. Just remember, prioritize protein. Eat simple ingredients of the highest quality that you can afford. Buying in bulk always cuts down on costs. Also, learn how to make a couple of condiments or sauces for yourself. This will help eliminate suboptimal ingredients and make your meals more delicious. And don't forget to drop a like on this video and be sure to subscribe to this channel for notifications on new videos that are coming out like my fermented salsa and my super butter recipe. There'll be even more functional bodybuilding training and nutrition content coming soon. Thanks for watching. See you next time. Oh,